Hey folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found with at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar at YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. Well, that's all I have for you right now, folks. And thanks for being a part of the From the Shadows podcast family. So with that being said, let's get this episode started. Hey, this is uh, Shane, the host of From the Shadows podcast, and I'm here with Jason, the super producer. Greetings, everybody. And the one and the only resident skeptic, the Ozark Howler. Hey, I'm here. I got a story for almost everything, you know, because I just been on I was on the street for almost 30 years. So I got a story for everything. So if if you got a subject, send it to from the shadows podcast and I'll tell you a story about it. Yeah. Yeah. And for the I guess for those new listeners, the howler has 30 years of being a sheriff, a highway patrolman, uh, air marshal, a homeland security. And, and probably a lifetime of just being an all-around funny dude. So Redneck, uh, man. Redneck. Redneck. So with that, thanks for welcoming, welcoming us onto the Odyssey Radio Network, and we hope that uh, you enjoy the show. Okay, so, Howler. Okay, How, Howler. You've been, you've been teasing us for weeks and weeks and weeks, all us farm people here in north central Ohio, that you've got this fantastic tractor story. So let's hear it, man. Let's hear your tractor. Well, you know, I told you about wrecking the truck hauling the tractor. You know, tractors oh, yeah. are just a staple. You know, I mean, I got a, I got a, there's a tractor in my driveway right now, 1954, if you can believe that. So Really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. You didn't know I had, a, yeah, yeah, I got it. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually on the market for another one. Um, I just can't decide. Uh, it's hard, know. dude. It's, I, I know it's hard when you got money to spend. Spend, man. No, that's <laughs> not it. It's just you know the one I got. This is the problem. One I got. It's a 1954 8 end. I blade my driveway because I got a long gravel driveway, and I just I got it. My brother bought two at a sale because he had to take both. They didn't they didn't sell, but the auctioneer called him afterwards and said, "Hey, are you interested in tractors? You got to take both." My brother wanted this big old four wheel drive uh, or front wheel assist diesel, and they said you got to take that old 1950 Ford. So. I, anyway, so he called me and said, you want this tractor? And I, that's how I got into this tractor. And my kids love it because they drive it around and, 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 you know, but I want something with live power when I'm doing some stuff. But anyway, you know, I've said it earlier that, you know, the, the statue on the, the Missouri state Capitol is, I can't think of her name, but it's a woman. It's not a man. And it's the goddess of agriculture because she's supposed to look out over the land, you know, in the 1820s when they started building the original capital, you know, they were, you know, farmers. So because of that, most farm implements are exempt from traffic rules. You know what I mean? That's why when you see them driving down the road with 25 cars behind them or, you know, they got giant stuff that probably shouldn't be on the road. Are you talking about Demeter? The goddess Demeter? Yeah, is that who it was? Yeah, Yeah, I can look it up. The Roman it, got it. The Roman yeah. got about agriculture. So, anyhow, there you go. So, if the if the if the farm owns the tractor and the product, and the and the kid is a is a family member of the farm, they they're exempt from truck rules or exempt from all this other stuff. Yeah. But we had a kid when we were when I was a sophomore. 
I was one of these. Was I a junior? I'm trying to think. When you know, you know how it is. Most of your class is 16, but there's a always a young kid, right? The kid that had to start when he was four or whatever, and he's yep. always young. So that was it, we're all, we're on football on two a days, and and there's a kid that wants to play football, and his dad's too busy farming to bring him up to school. All his brothers have graduated. He's the youngest of about six or seven kids total. So. And his dad bought a brand new 2750, I think is what it was, John Deere. It's probably 87 or so, 86. And um, so for a week or so there, uh, for football camp, he drove this brand new cab tractor, which is another odd thing. You know what I mean? When I was a kid, only the rich people had cab tractors. So <laughs> what? Well, I know yeah. you're out there. Uh, you're out there in the big, big corporate farms where you had cab tractors your whole life. Chain, but I'm telling you out here, it's you'd be lucky to have a, a, a rollover bar, you know, because <laughs> they, they they'd say you just jump off. It looks like it's gonna roll over. Just jump off. Jump to the uphill side too, so it rolls away from you. You don't need that bar. That's why you don't wear your seatbelt, so you can jump off of it. But anyway, <laughs> so he drives this brand new tractor to school to go to football practice. You know, it's got air conditioning. It's got AM, FM radio, and we all think that's cool. Well, fast forward, school's in session, and we're hanging out, me and this guy, and you know how schools are. Well, he was kind of, I don't even know if you call it dating. Whatever you do in high school when you hang out with girls, you know what I mean? When you don't really know what's going on yet. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. I never I never hung out with any girls. I was Okay. No. So, so he's got this, I, I'm going to use the term date. He's got this date with this girl, and she, and and. She'll she'll only go if she can bring her friend, right? Oh yeah, because okay. that's how it was back in them days. Remember? Yep. So and then he, but he ain't got no driver's license, so he tells me, because me and him buddies, you know, hey, you're gonna drive us. I'm going on this date, and you're gonna drive us. Why would I do it? Well, her friend's coming, and these girls were beautiful. They still are, but at that time, you know, they they did they they, they they were just beautiful girls. So I said, okay. So I had this 79 Chevy Scottsdale four-speed, four-wheel drive, you know, chrome wagon wheels, two antennas, CB antennas, glass packs, you know, the whole nine <laughs> yards. I had a Pioneer Super Tuner 2 with some TSX speakers behind the seat. You know how you do it back in them days. Gun rack. I even think I had a gun rack, if you can imagine that. Anyway, we're out driving around with these girls, me and him. Well, they start ribbing him for not being 16 yet. And he said, well, I know how to drive. Well, you're not 16. Well, I can drive. I've been driving on the farm, blah, blah, blah. So he ended up, I get out, and he ends up driving. He's driving my truck. So he's an unlicensed driver. We're driving down these gravel roads, and we go to his dad's farm. But his dad's farm had a big, uh, it, it was it was riverfront. You know, the Osage River runs through there, and they had several hundred acres, tillable acres down there. And we end up driving down this, you know, it's in the fall, but they haven't picked the corn yet. So the corn's about I don't know, face six foot. I, you know how tall corn gets. It gets tall, especially when you try to walk through it, which comes later in this story. Anyway, he's driving my truck, and the river is, it's in the fall, and the river's real low because we had a drought that year. And for whatever reason, he decided he'd drive out on a sandbar slash gravel bar. And he's, we're driving, and, and one thing leads to another, and we get way the hell out on the sandbar. And he gets, he starts spinning. And of course, un, un experienced drivers, they start spinning, they want to give it even more gas. So then he spins the, down to the rear axle and then they had lockout. So he's, well, we're going to put it in full drive. I got to get out, put it in full drive. He's telling me what a piece of junk truck my truck, my truck is because it's stuck. I said, dude, it's not in full drive. So I got to get out, spin the lockers, put it in four high. But then the rear end sunk down so bad. I had a big old chrome step bumper. Remember those big old chrome bumpers? Back oh, yeah. in the days. Anyway, oh, oh, it's yeah. dragging the gravel too bad. So then all he does <laughs> is spin the front down. So now it's stuck. <laughs> so he said, that's okay. I'm going to walk up and I'm going to get that brand new 2750 John Deere tractor. Now it didn't have full drive. Oh gosh. Yes. Yes. So they spent the money on the cab and air. And not the front wheel assist. <laughs> yeah. Because in, in the normal world, his dad had been farming for 60 years and never needed a 
four wheel drive tractor. So why would I get one now? So he he gets behind me because he didn't and, plan. He didn't plan on you guys. Yeah. So this thing's got about I think it had sixty six or seventy six hours on it, less than hundred hours. So for you equipment guys, you know how fresh that is when they got less than hundred hours. So he backs yeah. this thing. We weren't even smart enough to put about six chains together to keep the tractor up on the bank. You know what I mean? He drove the tractor down there and, <laughs> and, you know, thinking about it, there's about 15 ways I'd play it different than the way we played it. Anyway, he spun that brand new 2750 down to the rear axle. So now we got my truck and that tractor stuff. <laughs> and it's, and it's <laughs> got on 10 o'clock at night. So, being the unexperienced youth he is, we, he decides what he's going to do. We're going to go up there and get another tractor because they got a lot oh, of tractors. And, so, and nobody and nobody's realizing any of this is going on. Yeah, well, you know, I am. Yeah, no, because we're out in the country. We're out in the country. And you know what's funny is his dad, his his dad, like all farmers back in the old days, his dad had a job, right? Yeah, so probably his, worked, his, what he worked three to eleven or something. Three to eleven, yeah. How'd you know? Three, yeah, three to eleven. He was a uh, maintenance guy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He had a <laughs> job for three to eleven. So the first deadline was to get the tractors out before his old man got home at eleven thirty or so, eleven forty-five. Oh gosh, I, I love it. This is a great this, and, and this is a fantastic movie, right? So here. he this goes and gets this big old forty twenty, you know, old faithful. <laughs> Big old John Deere, you know, these guys are John Deere people. Big old John Deere 4020 and sinks that thing. So now we got, but we're closer to the bank at least. So now we got truck, tractor, and tractor. Well, the kicker of this story, and I should have put it in the lead, okay, the one of these girls' dads is a state trooper. Oh, boy. And when we had to pick him up, when he, he was making the, he was cutting the deal for the date, right? The deal yeah. was she had to bring her friend and we had to pick him up at the friend's house whose dad was a state trooper. So we roll in my glass pack, four speed truck. We roll in in my glass pack, four speed truck, you know, and uh, uh, a little John Cougar are probably back in them days or whoever <laughs> on the box. Right. And, and the girls come out, but they say, dad wants you guys to come in. Oh boy. Right. Absolutely. So I got to shut it off. Nothing, expect nothing less from so us. You know, there's a state car sitting there in the driveway. State dicks, that we, that's what we used to call them. And we walk into this house, and it had an island in the kitchen. You know what I mean? It was a pretty modern house back in the days. It had an island in the kitchen. And in the middle of this island, that's back when troopers carried big old stainless steel pistols. Remember? There was a four-inch 686 stainless steel with combat grip sitting there in the island. And he had a, like a gun cleaning kit out. Like he was cleaning his gun. <laughs> so the, fucking so the, this is yeah, this, staged, this, right? He's got it out. Oh yeah. This is the gut. This is the country song. Clean, I'll be here cleaning my gun. By, so, uh, yeah, Rodney Atkins. I'll be here so, cleaning my gun. And he wasn't a big guy. But he was in shape, and he, and he it, we, you know, we kind of knew who he was, and he kind of knew, but because around sports and stuff, you know, you kind of know who who the kids are, right, at school, but you don't know them. So, but I, what he told me is, hey, this is the deal. These girls got to be in this house by midnight. They can't be somewhere. They can't be broke down. They can't be dropped off at somebody. They're going to stay at somebody else's house. They're going to be in this house. Do you two boys understand that? And I said, yeah. And he said, okay, well, this is the deal. Now, this is before cell phones and pagers and all that stuff. This is the deal. If there's some reason you have a truck trouble, you break down, you, you, they, maybe you're at some place and they won't get back in the truck, okay, for you to bring them home sufficiently, you're going to call me at this number, the house here, and I'm, you're going to tell me where they're at and I'm going to come and get them. You understand that? And I said, yeah. And he goes, okay. I just want to be unclear that these girls will be in this house by midnight or you will be on the phone with me and I'll be picking them up by midnight. Now, don't be calling at 12 or 1230 or some, something like that. And, and, and I said, okay. So when this whole thing is going on, we're getting one truck, truck, tr truck stuck, then the tractor stuck, the second tractor stuck. My buddy is saying, you know, we got to beat – 11 o'clock, we got to be, you know, do this before my old man gets home. 
the girls are saying, you know, I said something about, you know, we got to have you girls home by midnight. And they're like, no, we're going to call the trooper's daughter says, I'm going to call home and say, I'm staying at her house. And she's going to call and say, she's staying at my house. And, you know, they, they have all this illustrious plans, <laughs> right? They have all uh, these plans yeah, going on have, in their mind. They hmm? have plans to get you killed. That's so, Hey, so <laughs> this, where we're getting stuck is way down the river and where he's got to go get these tractors is kind of up on a hill. And it's a long walk around, on the road, but what he decides to do is, hey, I'll, we'll, it's shorter if we just cut across a cornfield. Now, walking through a cornfield in daylight's bad enough, but you walk through a cornfield 10:30 at night when you're in a hurry and panicky, you get cut to pieces. Does that make sense? Oh, it's just, it's, yeah. it's terrible. It's an absolutely absolute terrible experience. Yes. So absolutely. finally, finally, I got to say, hey, dude, it's like 11:30, 11:45. He is, he is getting, he, you know, we're going to get, he's going to get a third tractor. Oh God. It sounds like, said, you better, sounds like you better have a bulldozer. And I <laughs> said, I don't know. I don't know. I said, I've got to call their dad. And these girls are like, you're not calling my dad. And I said, dude, he gave me the number. He told me how to call. You know, he's bluffing. That's what the daughter kept saying. He's bluffing. He says that stuff. He's bluffing. He's bluffing. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> and, the, and, and you can't go in the house anyway because, oh, the guys, my buddy's dad came home. He did, he come home, parked the driveway. So so on the third tractor, his car's there. He's home. So and, and, and he's oblivious that you guys. Yeah, because he's just dude. He's been working. You know, he probably worked on the farm all day. Oh, At three man. o'clock, he's got to go farm. So now he's worked two shifts basically. He just got home, took shower. And he's he's getting in bed. You know, it's Friday or Saturday night, whatever it was. I think it's, it was a Saturday night because they went to church the next morning. Okay, so. You know, get, yeah, he doesn't know because we are getting, we got these tractors out of the barn before he got home. But but the girl goes, well, you can't go in the house and call because you'll wake the dad up. And, and and there's a phone in the milk barn. I've been in this farm a thousand times. So I call, it's like 1140. I'm in this milk barn. My buddy's getting tractor number, you know, going to get tractor number three. I'm in the milk barn and I dial this dude's number, this trooper's number, and he answers the phone. Where are you at? And I started to say, and he said, I don't care about the story, man. Just tell me where you're at. I tell him where we're at. So anyway, 10, 15 minutes later, you know, the dude don't live very far away. We're kind of small town. I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, he shows up, you know, rolls in the driveway. He's at, you know, he doesn't have his uniform or anything on, but he is driving his skate car. And he's, and they, 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 you know, wheel up over by the milk barn. And these girls, he tells these girls, get on in. And he's got the window down. He said, I'll deal with you two later. That's what he told us. I'll deal with you two later. He's going to deal with you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He takes the girls and says, I'm going to deal with you two later. And he, and he drives away. And, um, and, that's in, and that's where the dad, the dad heard somebody come to the driveway, looked out the window, seen this cop car, and thought, what? So dad comes out and wants to know what's going on. Then we have to say we're stuck. And then he comes down there, you know, he's railing on us. And then he says, there's no way you should have pulled that truck from up here. You shouldn't have drove. First, it was you shouldn't have drove down there. Second was you shouldn't have pulled the tractor down there. You should have, if you were going to do it, you could have got a cable from up here and pulled. So he ended up calling a big truck wrecker, you know, like a big, big wrecker wrecker. Oh, for right? God's sakes. Okay. Yes. And I mean, it was like $235, which was a whole, I mean, that was a week's worth of money back in them days. Oh yeah. That was a whole week's worth of money. And, and, and we didn't get pulled <laughs> out to, I mean, we, we didn't get out of the, we didn't get out of the water till day, daylight or out of, you know, completely till out of, out of, it was daylight. And then his response was, since since my buddy missed the milking because his brother was milking by that time because they milked it like five and five or something you know how it works four and four or five and five I don't remember what hours they yeah milked, yeah you gotta do this yeah yeah it's the same time like twelve hours yep. apart I think it was like five and five is when they started or whatever okay then you guys got to go to church and they made us go to church after we'd been up since yesterday you know what I mean <laughs> and then he walked it and he told everybody. <laughs> how stupid were, we were he i mean told everybody to this day told everybody 
to told everybody <laughs> that how stupid we were. And this is the best part. So, so <laughs> after that, after practices, these these trooper cars were up there by our practice, like every night. You know, we're in football season. I don't know. It seemed like forever, but probably only a few days. Now I think about it as an adult. And you're just worried, you know, they're at practice. What are they going to do? Are they going to screw with us when we leave? Are they going to come out here and get us? You know, what, what are they, they going to do? And the other guys on the team are ribbing you because they know everybody knows the story, right? Everybody yeah. knows the story. So he never messed with us, ever. Okay. Now, I did get pulled over a couple times, but I don't think, you know, it wasn't like he stuck them on me or anything. But fast forward about eight years later, I am a, in the Highway Patrol Academy, and he is a sergeant at headquarters. I mean, he's kind of a big wig at, at, at that environment. And he treated me till the, uh, till the day he retired. He treated me like I was his kid, man. He, he was the best dude because and he told me because I, I was the only at all the girls, all the guys, all his girls dated because he had girls. He didn't have any boys. I was the only dude that called him. Oh, Jesus. You know what I mean? He had guys, he had guys, you know, they, they, he'd caught girls in, you know, lying about being here, or being there, or they'd come home late, or they didn't have a ride, or they had to stay here. I was the only dude that took any of his girls out that had the balls to call him like that before. You know what I'm saying? What do you think of that story? I love it. And he I treated me like, he treated me gold, man. He treated me but like you, gold. But you know what the moral of the story is? If you do the right thing, it will come back. It may not seem like like it's so great at the time to have to to have to do that call of shame or whatever. But you yeah. did the right thing, and it ended up paying dividends for you in the long. It run. did, yeah, it did. It did. Right, that's right. It did. I love it. Hey, I love the tractor story. I think there's a great lesson. Great lesson in there. We made, <laughs> Let me tell you how stupid it was. You know, the third tractor he was going to get, or the, 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 the tractor, the, the, the tractor he wanted was behind this old John Deere Model A they call Papa John, you know what I'm talking about? And yeah, that was the yeah, problem. We had no way of starting that old tractor and making it quiet. Because, one, you know, to get it out of the way to get the next big tractor, it was going to be pop, pop, pop. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, we, we were busted. We were busted, man. We were busted. But you know what? You guys tried. You know, you really tried. It's an A for effort. I got to you know, you. I, you know, I tell you, it's... it's um, you know, nowadays, yeah. nowadays, I think kids would just say they wouldn't even try. They'd just say somebody stole our truck and it, it ended up in the river. Well, n- nowadays, they wouldn't even have a truck to go to the river. You know what I mean? They would be on Xbox dating or whatever they do. You know, Zoom dates. I don't even know what... They don't even... They, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, not a lot of them. You know, because I'm still in the rural area where there's still some. I mean, I mean, I, I there's some kids at the high school that look like they're adults. You know what I mean? They're driving big power stroke pickups and hauling hay. You know what I mean? And in in, but the vast majority of kids, especially where I moved from when I lived in the suburbs in the city, um, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even know how to drive a four speed truck. How would you drive a four speed truck with no air conditioning anymore? You know what I mean? Oh, oh my god! Now now. Is that the only tractor story you got? I can't. Well, believe. that's the, that's the best tractor story that's I the got. Best tractor story. That's the best tractor story I got. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I mean, does it get any better than that tractor story? I don't know. I think that's pretty good. I, I think. Mean, that, I think. I think we can turn that into a children's book. Hey, the, the most people. My, hey, most people don't get one tractor stuck, much less two. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? At the same night, at the same time. <laughs> Oh, Hello. man. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of The Midweek Howl. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha 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 ha.